We've been talking about U.S. banking involvement in the Mexican drug wars. And as our story in Bloomberg Markets magazine tells it, and Sue uh, Keenan was mentioning, there was a plane, a DC-9, that was packed with drugs and money that was uh, busted by the authorities. And that uh, plane had been bought with laundered funds that they were transferred through Wachovia and Bank of America. We are rejoined now by Martin Woods, formerly at Wachovia. He served as director of Wachovia's anti uh, money laundering unit in London, and he left the bank after he was displeased with how executives uh, responded to his talking about what was going on. Uh, Martin, um, talk to us about some of the deferred prosecution agreements that have been happening in these types of cases. What exactly are they, and do they do anything to deter future activity like this? Well, similarly to UBS, um, Wachovia has entered into an agreement with the authorities to implement an enhanced anti-money laundering program and in exchange for compliance with that, the prosecutors will not instigate the prosecutorial action. The problem being that the actual bankers, and we must remember it's people, bankers that launder money, not machines, not actually um, the paper itself, it's the actions of individuals that launder the money. Nobody's held accountable, and I said recently at, at a conference in Miami, in effect, the bankers are having a free play at the roulette table using somebody else's money. And in the event that they win, they share in the profits. But when they lose, they walk away from the action with no consequence to their own actions. Um, speaking about consequences, Martin, I'm curious if you're at all concerned for your own safety as a, re as a consequence of speaking out about this. I'm not now. Um, I was at the time through lack of knowledge and understanding of some of the bigger issues. I, I, you know, I'm a long, long way away from Mexico. I don't anticipate holidaying in Mexico anytime soon. Um, I, I, you know, I have no fear for my safety or for that of my family. Martin, primarily because of geography. Right. Martin, might I ask, because what we're seeing here, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a direct link between the banks laundering this money and the violence that we see taking effect. State Department figures say that since President Calderon's been in office since 2006, some 22,000 people have been killed. Actually, I read the Sunday Times in London um, on Sunday, and they estimate that uh, incrementally the deaths have gone up by 80% year on year since 2007 through to 2009, which is a very bad trend. Um, it is a big picture. You have to see and go back to the origins of, of all our legislation about money laundering. The objective was to take the proceeds out of the crime to take away the incentive to commit the crime. The fact that the money's being laundered, it's going back across the border, and Hillary Clinton recognized this when she spoke in March last year, and it's clearly stated that some of that money is being used to buy the guns that are killing police officers. It causes some of us to ask the question, just how close are the launderer's fingers to the trigger of the killer's gun? Hmm. Martin, uh, how, does this, how does this turn out? Are, are more whistleblowers going to have to speak up? Because as we want to mention, this was not just something that was endemic to Wachovia. As Julie mentioned, other banks involved as well. Are people going to have the courage to speak up and point this out? Well, I'd like to thank John Dugan, the Comptroller, for a very gratifying letter that he gave to me. But as my own regulator, um, the Financial Services Authority in London, uh, I'm almost at war with the people, and, and I actually genuinely believe they actually have no interest in human intelligence. They push it away, and their actual welfare and support program for whistleblowers is in fact a referral to a charity. As a, an enforcement agency, they're not equipped to deal with, they're not in the business of cultivating human intelligence. And mm -hmm. if I just may for one moment contrast that, as a police officer we were reliant upon human intelligence and last year the Metropolitan Police in London ran a campaign based upon silence. Yeah. And the silence was the sound of a bomb not going off because Mrs. Smith from number four Dover Street called the police. Right. They cultivate human intelligence because of the impact and, it has, yeah. whereas regulators don't look for it. And Martin, I'm sorry, we're going to have to leave it there. Martin Woods, former anti-money laundering officer for Wachovia. Thank you so much. And that